Welcome back to another review. I've got the MH23 in and this was sent in via Nightcore for review. So what I thought I'd do is review this but also compare it to the Concept 1 which I had in previously for a while. So what I'm going to do is list out the key features on both of these torches. You can see that the MH23 brand new model out from Nightcore. That main feature on this is the micro USB charging and the dual stage switch. I've listed everything out there so you can see all the specs including the power levels and the Concept 1. This has been out a while, it came out last year. It's um, a different design to a lot of torches but these are both compact 18650 torches hence the reason I thought it would work quite a useful and interesting shootout just to see how they compare. They're both 1800 lumens. The MH23 comes with a clip, micro USB cable, you have the wrist strap, cover for the mic, uh, micro USB port and two spare o-rings. Concept one is much simpler. You have the strap and the spare o-rings. Both of these come with holsters. These are the standard Nightcore style and I get on quite well with them myself because they're decent thickness. You also have the Velcro fastening at the back as well as a loop behind that. And the material thickness I find to be decent. They've doubled over on the flap section and you have the water resistance inside. I also like the fact that you have large velcro area so you don't have to get a small patch you can just put it down you get a nice bit of uh, movement in that so you can uh, close it up nice and securely just showing you with the two of them in the holsters now starting with the MH23 this has quite a large side switch on it I haven't used any previous models in a similar design to this but you also have the micro USB port on the back with a flap so you have the built-in charging on this notice there's grooves there as well and I'll show you why those are there a bit later on so interesting design it's very much a sort of palm sized almost semi thrower as such there's a range on this just under 300 meters and you can also swivel around the silicone cover on the micro USB cover there so it's quite easy to get to that port you can also see on the base cap that there is a small hole there for the wrist strap and there's the spring on the inside there's quite a, a lot of play on that spring actually because of the compact size so when you put the cell in there you'll see that that squishes down quite a bit Nightcore are recommending the higher drain cells uh, this one is an 8 amp their own particular version but you'll notice how it sticks out hence the reason for the spring movement so that it gives it enough play there so you can screw it on it does take a little bit more force to do that with this uh, particular model and you'll notice how an unprotected seal is a bit easier to screw on due to the fact that it's a bit shorter so you can use unprotected seals with this torch head unscrews on the MH23 and you'll be able to see you've raised contact points that's the reason why you can use the unprotected batteries in this and I much prefer to be able to do that myself you have the choice there now with the clip it's quite a short clip but it does uh, fit very nicely and decent retention on it this is the normal method which you're going to be having it so it'll be head down as such in the pocket now if you want to attach it the other way around you'll see the grooves in the head section so that's there so that when you put the clip on and slot it in that you can actually fit it in there properly otherwise you won't be able to fit it in the other parts so there's enough grooves on the actual head design and there's also one just under the main switch so if you wanted to put it over the switch you can also do that and I'll just show you briefly so you can see that provides a bit of protection over the switch so you wouldn't accidentally activate it um, although it does make it a little bit less convenient to turn it on and off now here's a quick shot showing you with the head up in a jeans pocket and with the normal position of the head down you can see there's very little shows in that position. Moving on to the Concept 1 now, I've already looked at this before in detail but we'll cover it again. It's a completely different type of design to most torches. They've gone for something uh, very styled and uh, very different to most of the ones that you get. And you can see that you can only really attach the wrist strap in one area that is onto the pre-attached clip. And we have that side switch design which is also metal but it does stick out meaning that it can be accidentally activated fairly easily. That's one of the drawbacks with this torch design. Now unscrew it on the base. We do have a magnetic base on this as well and I find myself it's a bit easier to put cells in this. doesn't require as much pressure as the MH23 even with the protected cells. A little bit more pressure required with the protected ones due to the fact obviously they're slightly longer and the unprotected cells are even easier to fit with this. 
There's a small point, but it, obviously with the Concept One, you're going to be taking the battery out because there's no built-in charging. And you've also got that raised contact point. So again, um, flat top sills work just fine with this. Only really one position for this to go is head up due to the clip design and putting the two side by side. The uh, Concept One is actually slightly taller than the MH23. It's literally not much in it at all. It's not even a couple of millimeters. You wouldn't really notice it, but it is quite a bit thinner. That is an obvious area to note. So for uh, fitting in the pocket in that, it's gonna take up less space. You'll be able to see here another shot. So once you actually factor in the weight of these two, you'll be able to find that um, there isn't actually that much difference between them with the Concept One and a battery is about the same weight as the MH23 without. They've both got smooth reflectors on this and you'll see that the aluminium um, on the MH23 on the body section is a bit thicker. Not that it feels thin or weak on the Concept One, but it is a, a slightly chunkier feeling torch, whereas the Concept One is a more streamlined design. Now, when you do screw up the uh, battery contact on the MH23, you get the battery voltage test, and that's the side switch lights up so it flashes out the voltage, whereas the Concept One has the same voltage reading, but it flashes the main LED, so to tell you the voltage of the battery. I really like that feature. That's one of the nice um, add-ons that Nightwell have come up with. The UI on the MH23 is quite good. It takes a little bit getting used to half press, you can also access the low mode with that. It's the two-stage switch, just takes a little time getting used to that. So a full press will turn it on and off, half press will cycle through. You have mode memory for all of the main power settings. Now when half press, when it's on, takes you to a momentary turbo. Perhaps would have liked a continuous turbo if it was held in for a longer period of time. That's one uh, a possible change that I might have made. And the strobe can only be accessed when it's on, so you full press and then you half press to cycle through the different strobe modes and you have three strobe modes included with the MH23. UI is definitely um, easier to pick up than the Concept One, which can be pretty tricky. You do have the instant access to low, just a half press on the switch. And the good thing about the dual stage switch is it's very easy to feel the difference between a full press with a full click and a half press so you won't have any problems with that the concept one i have listed it out on the screen you will probably need to go back uh, a few times to check that out it's quite different to a lot of torches and it does take a lot of getting used to to be honest i have got used to it over a period of time but the main drawback with this is you can't change the power setting once you've set it and turned it on you have to change the power and cycle through that now you do have the two modes on the concept one so that you can switch between the general and tactical depending on whether or not you want to access the turbo or the strobe mode and once you're into the strobe, you can cycle through the three modes that are also included on this. They're exactly the same. I can't see any difference at all between the two of them, other than the fact it's a bit easier to access on the MH23. Now, you would definitely have to get used to using the lockout on the Concept One because it is very easy to accidentally activate that switch. Charging speeds on the MH23, about half an amp, and I tried quite a lot of different cells and batteries, so not that fast. And when you unplug the cable, it actually gives you a reading of the voltage, which is quite handy to have. One potential advantage with the Concept One is the fact that it has a magnetic base and it's strong enough to hold the torch. It can slip around a little bit on very shiny surfaces, but generally haven't had any issues with that. Also, it works quite well if you put it on a hat because it's lighter than the MH23. So going on to the beam shots, you'll see a tight hotspot in the middle on the MH23 and with the Concept One ignoring the cat paws because he was quite excited by it. A bit more diffused and spread out. So the beam patterns on these are actually quite different and you'll see this effect in the real world where the MH23 has more range, tighter hotspot in the middle, whereas the Concept One tends to have a mixed beam pattern and spreads it out a bit. So we run through my beam shots, I've done quite a few, and I'll come back at the end and discuss a few areas on both of the torches.
You'll notice there on the beam shots that the MH23 does have a bit of a tint shift in the middle. It goes sort of a yellowish color. It's more visible on camera than is in person, but I thought I'd mention that. Now, the negatives with this, the built-in charging speed's not that quick. Could take six, seven hours to charge a cell from flat. Can't activate strobe from off the momentary turbo. You can't lock it into a full turbo. You have to go into the turbo mode. And it does cost more than the Concept One, but the design is nice. I do like it. It's very comfortable position. I do like the two-stage switch. Very good design design on that and it's a very nice uh, palm size torch. The Concept One is a mixed bag. You're going to love or hate it. There are things that I do like about it and have grown to like over time. But the UI is something which takes a lot of getting used to and that side switch you have to use the tail cap uh, lockout for that. The mechanical lockout because you will accidentally activate it. it is an issue with that torch. I'd like to see an improvement in the design but it does have a mixed beam pattern and it works well particularly if you're going to put it onto a hat or something like that or the magnetic base so some good points the battery voltage indicator is excellent from Nikko I like that the quality is also very good they're very well featured and you've got the five power levels good spread although it could be a bit better in places you don't have a lockout on either of these torches which is a shame and I'd like to see the UI improved as well make them more consistent across the different models that's something that I've noticed with Nightcore but do let me know what you think on that I've put my summary of good and bad points up there for you and I'll catch you in the next one